record? <clears throat> All right, this is case D509836, Natalie and Rocco Camarada. Counsel, your appearance in bar number. Uh, Kurt Anderson appearing on behalf of defendant uh, Rocco Camarada, bar number 0093. Okay, and this is the time set for the court's non-jury trial, stack one. Combine that with uh, the dad's motion for sole physical custody. That's on, on the calendar today. Also, our return hearing on... Um, uh, brief focus assessment, but th I don't think one was done. And then the CPS records, I did ask for a quick update because the prior inquiry was there was no records found. Can you check with the girls upstairs, see if they um, made contact with DFS? And then also, um, I believe this was mom's motion for contempt uh, for attorney's fees and other related relief. A uh, second thing is I noticed that the mom is not present in the courtroom um, she was present back in the September 1st hearing when I think it was Senior Judge Bixler assigned the trial date. That trial date has not changed. That was verbally given on the record, video record in the courtroom. My JEA, uh, my secretary, she did a scheduling order and put it in the attorney folders of, um, I believe, Mr. Rowarna and Mr. Byron Mills, who had recently withdrawn as her attorney. Um, we have not seen any filings from the mom recently. We have not had any even phone communication or contact. Uh, does, does dad's counsel know why uh, mom is not here for trial today? I, I do, Your Honor. I had an email from her uh, early this morning indicating that she would want to try to settle the case but that she would not appear for trial. I, sent her an email, had not had a response. I subsequently called her on the phone. She answered. She indicated she was in Florida and that she uh, did not want to participate in the proceedings today. Okay. And uh, no motions to continue, no appearances. This will be a prove-up and a default would be entered uh, against the mother. So uh, what we'll do is we'll get Mr. Camarada on the witness stand. We'll swear him in and proceed with the uh, prove up questions. All right. Uh, watch your step. Remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk's going to swear you in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Okay. Counsel, you may proceed <coughs> with uh, your first witness. And I understand Thank you me. might have some exhibits. I do, Your and Honor. We haven't had time to mark them. Um, I, are they? Coach, I do have them in a bundle. Uh, okay, you have extra set. Or, I do, I thought, all right, so we'll work off of the originals, and you let us know which ones you want to introduce into evidence. We'll put an appropriate right. sticker, mark them for identification, and then obviously they would be admitted with no objection because no opposing side to object. I do have uh, the uh, affidavits. Would you like those originals submitted as part of the record, the affidavit of the custodian of records? Um, <coughs> yes, they would be. If they are part of records, they become part of the exhibit. Let me make sure. Sure, take your time. Sure, I give you uh, and I'm hopeful I can remember how to do this, Your Honor. It's been a while since I've done a prove up. So we'll go forward. Will you please state your name for the record? Rocco Melchior Camarada. And you're the defendant in this action? Yes. And you've also filed a counterclaim, is that correct? Yes. And you're a resident of the state of Nevada? Yes. When did you first come to Nevada to make it your home and residence? August 2000. Okay. And since that time, has it been your intention to remain in Nevada for at least an indefinite period of time? Yes. Okay. And you have a minor child, the issue of this marriage, is that correct? Yep. And who's that child? Nico Blaze Camarada. When was he born? He was born September 25th. 2008. Okay, thank you. And 
Is it true that you and your wife are incompatible in marriage? Yes. Likes, dislikes have grown so diverse and divergent you can no longer live together as husband and wife? Correct. Is there any hope of a reconciliation? No. Isn't it true that you've, in fact, been separated for approximately six years at the point of this yeah, Almost seven now. Thank you. Um, with respect to the uh, custody <coughs> issues, uh, are you a fit and proper person to have the sole physical custody of your son, Nico Camarada? Absolutely, yes. And, and why is your wife not uh, able to participate in the parenting of her son, Nico? I believe that uh, she has severe paranoia, uh, manic, uh, schizophrenic, uh, mental issues that have been going on for quite some time now in the last year and a half, two years have have gone downhill, she's gone downhill mentally drastically. Um, there's no <clears throat> uh, rhyme or reason to what she does or what she says or uh, how she acts. Um, she's just not the same person. One, it's like a 100% complete Turn around from who you know I I knew or I knew back when we first got married and and have you had uh, any uh, contact with the Metro Police with respect to your uh, son Nico and and to your uh, <coughs> wife Natalie? Yes. Can you explain the nature of that contact? Yeah, I, I was uh, contacted by uh, Detective Splinter and uh, Detective O'Grady. With Metro, and they said that they had to talk to me. I goes, okay, you know what, you know, and they said, believe me. They're like, don't worry, Rocco. You know, it's not, a, you know, because I, I'm, I was a little nervous. I'm like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I've they, never been told before in my life. Reason, what do they tell you? They said that they got to talk to me about Natalie and 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 Nico, and they said they got to, they're, uh, they're, um, investigating allegations made. Uh, against me from Natalie. I said, okay. So then they came and met me at my house, and uh, they wanted to make sure that Nico was there and, because they wanted to see Nico. They had to see Nico. And what they, later what they, they, they saw Nico, and then my, my sister actually came and, and picked up Nico, and she watched him for, you know, while I talked to them, because I didn't want him around there uh, for that. And they, they said that they had to, they had to talk to him or see him because she claimed that that he had I poisoned him and her and I poisoned him to cause his eye to droop now Nico has uh, a, a condition called Marcus Dunn syndrome and it's it's a jai winking syndrome and so what happens is is as he grows older It'll, it'll correct itself, one of those things. But when he, his eye will surge and it'll wink when he eats, sometimes when he, when, different words he says. And he's had that since he was born. And we go to Marietta Nelson, who's a, a extremely, extremely one of the best uh, pediatrician uh, uh, ophthalmologists in, in the country. Um, and she's like, wow, that's a very distinctive case of Marcus Gunn. Marcus Gunn was an was a, a optometrist in the 1900s that just so happened to name a lot of different diseases. Um, so what happens is, is his, he has a ptosis from the, from the muscle working more than the other one. So it's kind of droop a little bit. And they said that that was just the most disgusting thing they've ever seen. How could a, a mother take a picture of their kid and claim that the father tried to poison him and, and a genetic disorder that he, that the child has, she tried to use that as, you know, evidence against me, like saying that I poisoned him. Um, and then they went on to say that they're they're so sorry for me in, in my what I have had to deal with, uh, and they said that that it's just they've never seen anything like it. They said that the entire precinct is like 
we can't believe what's going on because she was, uh, I guess she, they told me that she went to the or she went to the coroner, and the coroner said, well, I can't help you, you know, you're, you're still alive. Um, she went to all these different people to get, you know, to have her get tested for poisons and stuff like that. And then every time that she would go to, like, a hospital or somebody with law enforcement, uh, they would claim that she, you know, there's nothing wrong, they didn't see anything wrong with her. Uh, and then she would claim that it was a conspiracy theory, you know, that I knew them somehow or, um, you know, uh, I paid them money or, or, or something like that. It was a big conspiracy theory. So then she she went to Florida. We didn't know. I didn't even know that she went to Florida. She told me that she was going to New York for a week. What time was, was this that she went to Florida? This was September 27th, two days after Nika's birthday. Yeah. Yes, 2015. Uh, she went to Florida, and then that's when the she was there for almost off and on for almost four, almost five months. Um, <clears throat> but when she was there the first month or so, she kept in constant contact with Detective Splinter, and she kept sending him videos of of her getting IVs in her and her going through uh, like the store detectors, like you know, like you go in Target and it beeps. She kept sending him videos, and and he just was like, you know, she keeps sending all these <coughs> videos to us. <laughs> and and then calling, you know, she, he goes, she's gone on now to call. She calls up almost every day, five, six times a day, uh, calling me terrible names uh, to myself, uh, writing me emails, calling me terrible names. Um, she said that I sent uh, somebody to New York to kill her. Um, and then she said that when she went to Florida, she saw the same guy in a hotel that she was staying at in the lobby and she took a picture of the guy and from what the, what the detectives told me that they said that there was a guy like like looking at her like what the heck are you doing taking a picture of me um, she sent that to the detectives and then uh, she said that um, that she's not afraid of clowns and that I had clowns literally clowns like bozo coming to kill her. Um, so they, they were telling me all this and and uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I had no idea. She said that I po tried to poison her and Nico, for that matter, with a pepperoni pizza that I sent home that me and Nico ate one night. We ate, I sent the rest of the, I was dropping him off at her house uh, because it was, you know, it was my time to give Nico to her, and I, here you go, honey, here's a pizza for you, to Nico, like, here's the rest of the pizza that we didn't eat, and I guess she supposedly had a piece of that, and that was the pizza that I tried to poison her with. Um, but then, let's and, let's talk about some more recent events. Yeah, sorry. Anything happened since she came back in December that indicates that she may not, that she's not fit to have Well, she was, um, yeah, she kept, she, she showed up at the school. The school actually warned me. The school, we had a meeting, me and the principal and the assistant principal and the front office staff, and um, the meeting kind of went like this. Listen, uh, she's been sending us, the school board and the school, all these crazy emails and pictures of herself and saying that I poisoned her and I'm trying to poison her through the air um, and they said that that we've gotten with our lawyer and and we she's claimed that she admitted that when she comes back into town she told them that she is taking Nico to Florida period end of story that's it she's taking Nico to Florida and I brought our uh, our, our, our our first uh, custodial papers in and I showed them I said uh, you know they're not to bring they wanted them because I told them I said well she can't bring them out of town without my permission and the school said well please bring them to us so that we have them here um, it was the, the custody order that's no problem and they said okay with this I said they said we will not allow her to take him even on her days because she has told us as soon as she takes him or picks him up, she's taking him to Florida. And we found that that's against the custody order. I said, okay. 
Um, and they said, you know, and just to be better safe than sorry, because we've been getting so many irrational and, and not right emails from her, keep, this is over right before spring, uh, Christmas break, they said, keep Nico home Monday, Tuesday, because those were her days. I said, okay. I kept him home, because they didn't want to cause, you know, they didn't want to scene at school. I kept him home. Tuesday, they call me, they go, or it might have been Monday, I'm sorry. They call me, they go, she was just here. Uh, she came in here with her so-called aunt, and they were saying, where's Nico, where's Nico? They said, we said, we don't, we don't know, he didn't come in today. So, excuse me, so then, that was that, and so Wednesday, I have him, okay? And I think it was Wednesday that night, or could have possibly been Thursday, I was staying at a hotel. I didn't want Nico to be uh, subject to, because uh, I knew that she would cause a problem. And I knew that I didn't want Nico to see that. I didn't want Nico to have to deal with that, you know? Uh, so I had him, we, we were on the, the hideout, we were on the lam, you know, we stayed in hotels uh, when I had him um, for a few days there. And she came to my parents' house uh, with two guys that nobody, that I'd never known, heard of before in my life or seen. I didn't know who they were, but I, I, you know, I didn't know who they were. People that, you know, when I talked to any people that had contact with her, um, they didn't know who these people were. Um, they didn't know who the lady was that showed up and claimed that she was her aunt at the school. Um, so they came to my parents' house. My parents are both cancer survivors. They're 75 years old. And they were, uh, they came to the, the one kid came to the door, knocked on the door, and said, uh, uh, is, 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 is this the Kamaraj residence? And my mom, being naive in a small town, you know, nice lady, like thought it might have been one of the kids that I coach hockey with. She goes, what, what, you know, oh, hi, honey. And, and right when she opened the door, Natalie came f running, booking up the, the sidewalk to the house and said, Sandy, and slammed on the doors. And just then it was like a horror picture. Like my mom just, just shut the door, you know, before she got there. And then they, they, they proceeded for until the police got there, which was, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes from what my mom said. You know, I don't know how long it was. I wasn't there. But I guess they pounded on the windows and the doors. And there was two guys and, and Natalie. And they were, they were saying very, very, very bad, you know, calling them mother, you know, beepers. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you. We're going to get you. You mother beepers, you know, we're going to get you, we're going to get there. Yeah. And, and then the police came and they said, listen, you know, uh, if they come back again, call us. If it continues to happen, we could have her trespassed. And, and that was that. And then she showed up at where I used to coach hockey that I got uh, fired from because she sent threatening and vulgar and horrible emails to the the, the head of the league that I coached for and numerous, numerous parents that I coached their kids for years and years and years saying oh, disgusting, horrible things, uh, calling them, I mean, I have all the emails, I mean, calling them, you know, they're in on it, they're, 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 they put her life in danger, you know, it's all these people that, you know, they've never seen her before, really, I mean, she never came to any of Nico's practices or games, nothing. Um, and, 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 and she was 86. She caused such a scene. She had, she had uh, a bunch of guys with her. She brought them in. Um, they cornered the Zamboni driver. Uh, they cornered one of, one of the guys that, that works out with me that's the nicest kid in the world. They scared the bejesus out of him. Um, and he won't, he won't, I don't even think he was going to be a witness, but he's scared of her. So he doesn't even want to do that. But uh, they 86 her. So the Fiesta on Rancho 86 her from the property. And because I was associated with her and because I was part of their youth hockey program, they basically 86 me because they didn't want 
me around because of her. And so, like, there goes my income. There goes anything, any money that I make. You know, there goes what I love to do with these kids. I mean, it was horrible. It was horrible. Not to mention, now my son, you know, doesn't have a place to play hockey for the time being. I mean, it was, you know, something he loves doing. It was just terrible. What, uh, yeah. after the, we were before the court and there was an additional order entered with respect to custody and visitation, can you tell me how that visitation went with Natalie after that last court appearance here? Um, well, she, she, I dropped him off that night right after we left here. And she, she didn't bring him to school that, I think that was Monday. She didn't bring him to school because he had off that Monday. She didn't bring him to school Tuesday. And I don't think she brought him that Wednesday either. Um, she might have brought him that Wednesday, but I think it was a half a day. Yeah. I picked him up. Um, and that was Super Bowl weekend. Then she got a DUI that weekend, that Friday night. Um, she got DUI, and then Sunday, Sunday rolled around, it, 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 that was her time Sunday, or sorry, Saturday was her time at two. She was still getting processed out of, you know, jail or whatever it is. She, she wasn't available. She tried to, she called me from jail. <laughs> then her, her grandmother called me. And so I knew, uh, I got a call from Clark County Detention. Uh, inmate wants to talk to you. I picked up the phone, there was nobody there. I said, okay, I, no, there was nobody there. Then her grandmother called me. Her grandmother's 90, 92 years old and in Florida, and, and she goes to bed at, you know, 7 o'clock Florida time. And it was very weird to get a call from her grandma that one in the morning. So I knew that something, I, I didn't answer the phone. I, I was half sleeping, me and Nico. Uh, you know, Nico was sleeping, I was half sleeping. Uh, so I didn't answer the phone, but I but she left me a message. So I, I looked her up. I said, there's something, you know, I mean, common sense. So I looked up, and there she was. She had a DUI. And and then the next day, the 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 uh, in, informal supervisor of the custody with Nico, Howard Brody, he sent me a text saying, oh, my work has run late. Uh, I can't be there. My mom's here. I can't be there. Uh, I can't be there. So, uh, can we do it later? I said, "Well, was that because it's later?" I said, "I said, or does that does that have to do anything to do with Nally being in jail still?" He goes, "How do you know about that?" I goes, "Well, you know." So then. I said, listen, I said, why don't you take the day, make sure she's all right, you know, and capable of, of handling a, a seven-year-old, you know? And they go, okay, fine. He goes, okay, fine. Because I don't even know if he, you know, knew she was out or, you know, I didn't, I don't think they knew, you know, I don't think he knew that she was out or what time they were going to get out. They were just trying to kind of cover their tracks, I think. So then the next day, she... They call me, and I say, okay, well, then let's, uh, you, know, you know, let's do the exchange. And, and we did it, and then that was that. That was Sunday. And then Monday, she didn't bring him to school. She called me with him in the car. Uh, you are such a, you know, piece of crap. Uh, you... You're, this is a conspiracy theory. You know I don't drink. You call the police on me. Uh, you call them on me. You know, this is right in front of Nico. I mean, I can hear Nico. Uh, you did this. You're no role model. You know, you're the biggest piece of crap dad ever. Uh, you know, with Nico right there. Then she called, Then she goes, I want money. Come get me or else we're leaving on a, on a plane to Florida. Uh, you did this. And so she didn't bring Nico to school Monday. She didn't bring Nico to school that Tuesday. Um, and then she had Nico calling me, the poor baby. She would have Nico calling me from the, they were like at a tow truck place, you know, like getting her car out. And he's like, Daddy, Daddy, we need help. Help us. And, you know, it breaks my heart, but I mean, I know, I don't want to talk to her because every time I talk to her on the phone, with Nico around, she 
calls me every name in the book and says I'm a terrible role model and a terrible father. And, I mean, how much can a, uh, a that can a kid possibly handle or, or need to handle? You know? Um, so so that days, was that. Of the days she had him for school, about how many days was that? I th well, I think she had him, um, uh, uh, top of my head, I, I have a paper somewhere, right? She had him from February 1st, when we came in here last, um, until now, because in the last month she has not, she's failed to take him. She does not, she does not, she comes up with a different excuse every week not to take Nico. Um, so you've had him every day for the last month? Um, yeah, three and a half weeks, yeah, four weeks. Every day, I mean, and that's nothing new, but I mean, you know. But anyways. So how many days did she have him where she was responsible for school? Eight days, and six of those days he didn't go. Didn't go to school. Yeah. Okay. Different, different reasons. One of the reasons why it was he was sick, and he said, "Oh, she said he's sick, he's did sick, he's did sick." Did she ever take him to the doctor? She took him to the doctor. What happened? They left. Left when? They, they brought him back into the medical uh, examination room, and she, like, I talked to the nurse afterwards because she, I guess, what happened was is she said that she took him to the doctor, then they, uh, and then at school the next day, I said, well, what did the doctor say? Because that's when I picked him up. I said, what did the doctor say, honey? You know, what, <laughs> he goes, well, we didn't, we didn't see him. I goes, what? I goes, okay. So I called the, the nurse there. I goes, what happened? She said, they came in. We brought him back to the medical examination room, and she stormed out of there like a crazy, you know, she goes like, you know, she stormed out of there like a crazy person, slammed the door and just left, and didn't say nothing to nobody. That was all. So I brought Nico that, that when I picked, oh no, I didn't pick him up from school, I'm sorry, I picked him up from her. Because uh, she didn't bring him to school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Picked him up from her. And then I brought him immediately to the doctors, right? Just to make sure that there was nothing wrong with him, or to make sure that there, and and to make sure that the, I knew there was nothing wrong with him. And the doctor said, "There's nothing wrong with him." I said, "I know that." So. So, what is Natalie's physical condition like? Her physical condition. Right. Does she suffer from any conditions? Yeah, I think she has, uh, it's called IC, interstitial cellulitis. Cystitis. Cystitis, yeah. Uh, it's uh, chronic bladder infections, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I think a few years, four, five years. And, and how does that condition affect her? I, uh, from what I've seen of her, I mean, she has to use the restroom all the time, uh, a lot. I think she has a lot of pain in her stomach. It, it kind of, it kind of. If she has a flare-up, it totally decapacitates her. I mean, it, you know, she's done. She can't do anything. Thank you. Very, I think it causes a lot of. Uh, you know, she's always tired. You know, I mean, because of, you know, she's in pain. I think. Okay. When you were first married, did she ever? Was she on any prescription medications? Yeah. When you, when you marriage, what medications was she on? She was on Clonopin for as long as I can remember, years and years and years. Xanax, pain, different types of pain medications. I, I don't know exactly what they were. Um, that, and, and that's when we were married. I mean, she was, I mean, very, very, very heavily, heavily prescription drugged with those. And I, I mean, we've researched them. I talked with her grandmother about like the clan, clan and stuff, and the grandmother's like, that's the worst, that's a horrible drug, and, you know, and I said, yeah, I, there's all kinds of terrible side effects mentally and physically from from those combinations of drugs. How old was Nico when you guys separated, stopped living together? 18 months. Okay. So, <clears throat> the, uh, let's go back, you know, we've talked about this for a while. And uh, true that you're not going to seek alimony from from uh, Natalie at this point in time. Right? Alimony? Yeah. No. And is it true that in the six years, almost seven years, you've been separated, that your properties are now divided to the point where you don't seek any assets from her, and you're satisfied with the assets that you have in your possession? Yeah, absolutely. And are you, are you, you know, or aware of any debts that are you still have from your 
period when you were together? No, I don't think so. Right, so you would be happy with a separation where you take your debts, she takes her debts, yeah. you keep your assets, she keeps her assets? Yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> um, Have you disclosed everything? Has either side disclosed to each other about their full extent of their property and their debts? I believe there have been uh, affidavits of financial disclosure filed. I don't think that's the correct term anymore. Financial disclosure statements filed yeah. by all the parties involved. Uh, we have like retirement benefits, 401k, any no. expensive items. Do you have any of those? No. Do you have a retirement plan? No. 401k? No. Do you have uh, you a member of the union? No. Do you have any pension plans of any type? No. Jewelry, wedding rings, anything of that sort? No. Uh, vehicles, real property. Your vehicle, do you have a, own a vehicle in your name? No. Do you know that she does? No, I think it's your grandmother's name. I think. No houses. Okay. Do you have a health insurance? Oh, yeah. You do? And you're able to maintain uh, your oh. health insurance? I, I had health insurance. I'm not sure about that anymore because, anymore? yeah, I, I, I think that. That was her. She was. She. That was her thing to pay when we got separated. You know, she, she was going to pay that, and I think that she kind of let that overlap. Okay. Does Nico have health insurance? Do you provide health insurance for Nico? Right. Well, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Health? Are you talking about health insurance policy, like a life policy, insurance? Health insurance policy, or, or oh, no? I no. Me and Nico both have health insurance policies. I'm sorry. I thought Kurt was talking about life insurance no, policy. No, no. Health insurance. I'm health sorry. Insurance. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because of the content of what we were talking about, I, I thought that it was. Do you have it through like, your job or private? No, I, I, I privately. Okay. Is there a cost for Nico's portion? Yeah, it's, I, it's minimum. We're on the Obamacare. Okay. Yeah, we're on the Obamacare. Is that like Medicaid? It's not Medicaid, though. No. But it's a minimal cost, so you'll continue to pay for that for Nico? Absolutely. Normally, I'd have the mom split half of that, but it's so minimal that dad will pay 100% of it. Okay. Continue. Um, if I could, I don't know if I should rest with him for a second. I do have a couple of these exhibits. I'd like to point some things out to the court with respect to exhibits uh, A through, and I apologize to the court clerk. She stopped at D, and there are actually exhibits through F. Okay, so they are now marked as A, B, C, D, E, F, marked for identification. Okay, and then you have the witness identify him and... and I, I would move for their admission, Your Honor. Uh, okay. Exhibit A are medical records from Mount Sinai Medical Center, uh, urology department. The, uh, these records involve treatment for her interstitial cystitis condition. Okay. Um, included in that uh, is a letter from Dr. Yvonne Koch that she's attached. Uh, the letter indicates that this is a chronic problem that manifests itself that is unpredictable. It is a condition that many people didn't understand. She needs constant and regular medical attention with access to qualified and disease-specific knowledgeable workers. Uh, as part of the treatment for each of these, she has uh, injections of, uh, into her uterus. And at the time these injections and this treatment goes on, she is completely incapacitated for approximately two weeks. She is required or she is prescribed to take um, two different types of opioid medications, uh, Narco and Percocet uh, for her pain three times a day, as well as other medications related to that. Uh, when she was in Las Vegas, and this would be part of Exhibit 2. Uh, exhibit B? Exhibit B, pardon me. Exhibit yeah. B, she uh, went to Dignity, uh, St. Siena campus of St. Rose Dominican. They ran a, a screen on her. They indicated the presence of opioids uh, in her blood. At that point of that examination, she was there because of her claimed poisoning. Uh, and the records uh, indicate that you've been examined by our facility today. Our caregiver found nothing wrong on the exam. This was in September. 
The poisoning supposedly occurred in July, last year, July of that year. And so there was a complete talk screen then at that time. Uh, exhibit C, Your Honor, is the uh, investigation report. And you don't usually get these. These are the actual report from Detective Splinter that indicated that they had uh, completed an, a, an investigation and determined, and they had determined that they could not proceed <coughs> based upon the evidence they had. He describes that he had taken uh, the uh, Your Honor. Sure. She had had uh, testing performed, and this is part of the exhibit. Uh, which indicated a couple things that were interesting. They ran this by the doctor at the uh, Henderson, Dr. Hickson. Uh, first of all, her talk screen indicated the presence of lithium, which is a, an antipsychotic medication for, uh, for a number of conditions. Uh, uh, and she testified in her deposition, and she told Detective Splinter, and it's in the records and in the videotapes that provided, that she'd never, ever taken any medications for psychological conditioning. And uh, the doctor indicated that the presence of a lithium was uh, an indication that that was not true. He also reviewed the entire talk screen and indicated there's nothing here that indicates she was poisoned by, uh, I believe she talked about arsenic, she talked about lead, she talked about mercury. There was nothing, none of those levels are high enough to indicate that she was, in fact, poisoned by any of those substances. Uh, and so we have Dr. Hickson reviewing it independently. We have her examination at the uh, Siena campus here locally. All of them indicate there was nothing wrong with her at that point in time, despite all these allegations and uh, being made against my client. Uh, <coughs> During the course following that last hearing, uh, she was ordered, you gave us three names, <coughs> she was ordered to go have that taken care of, at least an examination. I contacted uh, counsel and I contacted one of those individuals to try to arrange those visits. We received no uh, HIPAA releases to obtain any of her medical records. I sent correspondence to Mr. Mills before he withdraw, requesting that for specific doctors that had been identified. We never received a response to that. I even requested uh, that we hire a, a different uh, psychiatrist at our expense, Dr. Lubit out of uh, New York City, who is a nas nationwide, nationally known and respected uh, psychiatrist who performs these types of custody evaluations. And uh, at our expense, and again, that was met with no, no response to try to, uh, and for argument, we're not trying to hurt this person. Uh, we want her to get help. She does not understand that she needs help. Uh, specifically, in uh, the interviews, the Detective Swinner quotes neighbors speaking to her, and each one of them says, without any apparently any, uh, any encouragement, that they think that Natalie's either uh, has some type of polar uh, problem, bipolar problem, or is crazy, and that's the terms that we we hear. And I don't know, and I can't say, and because we don't have the additional information, we don't know whether she's a danger to Nico at this point, but we do know that something is wrong with her. She's been on lithium. She uh, has a condition that she does not recognize at this point. Uh, I did have an extensive conversation, and I'll make a representation, with her grandmother. Her grandmother indicated that her mother was also had psychological problems, that she abused Natalie as a child, and that she now sees in Natalie the problems that she saw in her mother uh, as her mother uh, reached maturity and, and went through life. And so because of those concerns that we have, Your Honor, that's why we're asking at this point, sole custody until mom can come forward and indicate that these issues have been resolved. Uh, 
and I can say with my conversations with her today trying to get this resolved, I said, I said, the problem is you. I said, there's no financial issues that we're concerned about. You've got to get help, and she again denied that she has any issues. The text message I received from her today indicates I'm fine, there's nothing wrong with me. And I, if the court, <laughs> there are uh, videotapes that she took of herself in Florida going through the exit, the, 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 the uh, signal at the stores. And she would go in and out, in and out, setting off the alarm, just with pictures of the alarm, not indicating why it was going off, trying to convince Detective Splinter that she was indeed, um, the heavy metals were so, the dose was so large that she was setting off metal detectors was her, was her argument, which is difficult to fathom. And then attached also to Exhibit D are emails to Detective Splinter, uh, graphic language telling him he doesn't know what he's effing doing, he needs to effing get on the stick and get this case filed, and, and there are also some videotapes as well, um, which indicate, and like I said, we don't have any expert testimony today, but I think the evidence is pretty overwhelming that there is something that needs to be addressed in her uh, mental uh, outlook. Uh, based upon that, Your Honor, uh, we would like to decree in her uh, granting an absolute decree of divorce to, to Mr. Camerata uh, based upon the financials. Uh, we would like attorney's fees, Your Honor. I've uh, been counsel since 1984. Uh, I have, in the other district court, been awarded attorney's fees as high as $350 per hour by court order based upon my experience in, in different fields. Uh, I have, uh, this case has been, uh, You took over from Warner's office? I did. You're separate law firms. Correct. Okay. I'm, I'm doing this on my own. Well, I'm doing it on my own, but I'm trying to help push this through for Mr. Warner. Okay, and you bill uh, the father at an hourly rate? I charged him a flat fee, Ron. I charged him $5,000. I see. For, for everything? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And you've done, uh, if you were to bill hourly, you've done more than $5,000 worth of work? Easily, Prepare for this trial? Easily, yes. And uh, how long you say you've been an attorney? I've since 1984, 32 years. Okay. And the amount of work that was done on this case? It was pretty extensive, Your Honor. We... we uh, discovery, correspondence... Discovery, medical bills... Uh, difficulty in you know, <coughs> trying to deal with this. Depositions were taken of... Uh, you did depositions as well? Three depositions taken. Uh, and I do have the original deposition of Ms. Camerata. I think I'd also like to leave that as part of the record. You have the original in a sealed envelope? I do have the original, Your Honor. And you, uh, first of all, Exhibits A through F, you move for their admission? I move for those admissions. No opposition, no objection. Those will be admitted and received into evidence, and then you're going to request, uh, you move to publish? Publish the original certified transcript. Okay, uh, the Ms. mother's Camerata. deposition will be published. Any other depositions? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay, and uh, what's the offer of proof on her deposition? Uh, what was established at her deposition? In her deposition, she indicated that she had, in fact, made numerous contacts to the friends, associates, admissions uh, on her email, part? friends, family, uh, threatening them, uh, indicating she was coming for them, indicating that uh, that Rocco was dangerous that he was her harming Nico, that she had been poisoned. She also indicated that she was coming for Rocco. She had an Israeli bodyguard. She indicated she had availability and knowledge of firearms that she was going to use when she came back. Um, I think it's part of the record. The father had filed like four supplemental declarations. Correct, Your Honor. Some of those contained um, photos of uh, Facebook or Instagram messages. Some Correct. of them were... And there are actually five. We misnumbered them, but there are actually five declarations for Mr. And uh, I only see I only see four. There's a fifth one that's going to be filed. Well, we misnumbered two of them. A couple of them, or one of them at least, was um, Instagram um, from your friends. Yes. And then Natalie, the mother, is commenting on their Instagram photos. Yes. And she made several comments that your Friends didn't understand, or yes. Um, okay, we want to elaborate on that. 
Well, yeah, when your just, friends contacted uh, you and then they sent you the Instagram? Exactly. Yeah. They said, hey. That, you know, why is she commenting on it, our photos? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, it was, you know, for a time there, it was, every morning I woke up, I didn't know what photo I was going to have to put up because I would get a different email or call from, from, some people I haven't even talked to in years that, you know, they said that they... Are you that, friends with them on Instagram? No, I, I don't have that. You don't have an Instagram account? I have an Instagram, but it's not don't active. Really, okay. I don't... Yeah, it's not active. These people um, would contact you out of the they blue? would contact me, and they would and they would say... But most of them were people that I are, were involved with in hockey. Um, and there was a couple of people with their kids in pictures, and now they put underneath it... You know, commented on the picture. These people picture. were not friends with Natalie. No. Uh, put on the the picture. Uh, you know, this is a horrible organization. Um, this Jen person in particular has my uh, has let my uh, is solely responsible for having my son's life in danger because of Rocco and Rocco. This man tried to poison me. Um, so she disparaged you in those comments. Yes. Two people that. Two people that. Really, just hockey parents or. Hockey parents. Really have yeah. To. Well, no, I, I know them well. I mean, I would, I coach their kids. Okay. You know, uh, the the one in particular, Nick Dyson. Uh, she, uh, I don't know if she it wasn't Instagram. I don't believe. I think it was. Yeah, it might have been Instagram. Yeah, it was she started a conversation with him or started commenting on his post or pictures, whatever they are, and, and said, uh, "Oh, you don't you you don't scare me because you were in the military. I come with the uh, Israeli." She she like took a picture, of, sent him a picture of a Israeli bodyguard. Apparently, it was a female. Yeah. Holding a. Yeah. And this is my this is this is my bodyguard, and he, and and like I said, this kid this is the one of the kids that got cornered by her and her and the people at the fiesta. This kid's like the nicest kid in the world, <laughs> and he was like terrified. The kid stopped coming to my that skates. Child? I'm sorry. How old was that child? It's not a child. It's a man. He's oh. thirty. Oh. Yeah. Adult. Okay. Yeah. The, all right. The, what? So that's been filed on the record. Anything else in his declarations? I don't think. Other than the no, Instagram. Exhibits attached to most of the text messages that we've talked about. He's got a list of many incidents and encounters with mom, right. which is why he wanted to document it and file it in the file. Right. Okay. Um, is the dad asking for any back child support historically? Because you can go back. Four years in the absence of a court order and from the time he filed his counterclaim, April 2015. I, Your Honor, hey, Your, Your Honor, she, I, she doesn't work. She's disabled, as far as we know. Um, yeah, I don't need any. I just need my son. That's it. You are voluntarily waiving the uh, the uh, your right to ask for child support, depending on what the historical de facto custody timeshare was, and he would have to testify to that. And we would, can we make it conditional on this, Your Honor? He asked if for she gets it. Help, if she gets help and uses the money to get help, we won't ask for it. But if she just doesn't want to support her child? That's, that's between you and your client. If he asks for it, you'll get something on paper. Collecting it might be another story. Sure. But if you want it, you have to ask for it. And then you have to tell me what the custody was in the last four years before they came to court. And then I'd either apply. I think we'd only be entitled to the minimum, Your Honor, based upon her. I think exhibit. Uh, Who really had custody four years prior for the, her filing for divorce? Right. Did, I, was it fifty-fifty custody? It was, Did you have him most it was, more of the time? It was not. I say ninety percent. That's pretty conservative. That's your testimony. You had Nico ninety percent of the time. Yeah. And that's yes. consistent with his prior declarations as well, Your Honor. And the reasons why is because did she travel a lot to attend to her medical conditions? Yes. It, it, she yes. did it also by choice to leave the boy with you? Yes. Yes. There would always be a different uh, uh, and you reason. you enrolled Nico in your school zone? Yes. So he, he goes to school where you live? Yes. And um, what about her residential stability in the in historically? Uh, well, she lived with her, her father-in-law, then, then her father-in-law and her had a big blowout because he, he accused her. That she moved? Just twice. Okay. 
uh, well, I'm sorry, just, just once from the filing laws to an apartment. The file law kicked her out because he accused her of stealing uh, drugs from his house. Uh, she kicked, got kicked out. She moved into, and this was, you know, three years ago, and I, I saw some serious, serious problems. I called the grandmother, and I tried to get the brother on board, and I said, listen, there's something wrong. I said, you know, she's going down in a downward spiral mentally. I said, please, let's get her help. And then I, I, you know, then she got, you know, she manipulated them, and I was the bad guy. She moved into an apartment, and that's where she's been. Did um, she hold down jobs? No. How did she live? Her family? Uh, her, dis her family disability, yes. She's on disability? Yes. Do you know how much dis disability she received over the years? I'm not, over the years, I'm not 100% positive. I know that she, I think she gets 1200 a month. And she told you that? Yeah. It, and she was. Uh, What's her financial disclosure? She was back, back paid for that when she received Lump the sum. disability. Yeah. She's been on disability. That's why she doesn't work. Okay. 1387 based on her financial disclosure form. Okay. Uh, so back to you, counsel. You hmm. requesting uh, child support arrears on paper? Correct. It would it would be a judgment. Collecting yes. it again is a different story, but yes, let's, let's seeking yes. that, I need to hear that from the dad. So you need you, to ask that, him you, after the child support arrears. Yes, I, I think it's well, it's for Nico. So yes, yes. All right, so you want a judgment for child support arrears? We'll go back four years. Uh, oh, by the way, who paid or provided most of the daycare before he entered kindergarten? Me, care, Nico. Me. You and your family. Yes. Okay. Did you pay for daycare or yes? Preschool. Preschool. He went to uh, uh, near Tamid on uh, Valley Verde. Okay. Um, let's establish the child support arrears. So, if she was, if she's receiving thirteen eighty seven, twelve hundred is more in line with what he said. That I guess he, she told the mom told dad. Right. So if we use twelve hundred. Oh, by the way, because she was certified disabled by the government. Uh, did you know that the child might get a check because the mom's disabled? Well, that's that's I've been I've been wondering about that. Um, it might be too late. You might want to speak with a lawyer, and they can give you that lump sum going back from the time that she was disabled. Now, if it is um, so, we can hold this in abeyance because if a child was going to get their own check, those monthly checks that would go straight to the primary custodian, which would be dad, right. would be in lieu of mom paying dad 18% child support. And neither parent has any other children or dependents under the age of 18. So this is their only child. So what I will do is establish, or I can leave it, I can reserve jurisdiction, leave it open for dad to file a claim on behalf of the minor child to receive those and it's been, how long has she been dis declared disabled? Do you know how long she's been collecting disability? I, I, I believe, I believe uh, right around three years. And you might get three years lump sum on behalf of Nico because the mom is disabled, and that could be her child support to you. So I can just leave the issue open rather than go through the effort of having to figure out numbers right That's now. And then he, um, and there's no statute of limitations on that. He can come back, file a motion with the court, and apply. Or I, uh, he can submit, um, he can file a motion. We just have to establish it. And then the dollar amount that he receives on behalf of Nico would go straight to dad. And then um, you would just submit an ex parte order establishing that as in lieu of the child support arrearages. Okay. It wouldn't require a hearing. It's not contestable because we're establishing that today. Okay. So you follow. You're going to go apply for Nico with Social Security, um, and then advise them. I don't know if you're going to need mom's records or whatever, but make the application as the sole legal custodian, and saying, "Hey, the mom's disabled. I think the child might be eligible for a check," and then um, find out one way or the other. They might retro it from the day she because she was declared disabled. That's three years worth of checks coming to Nico. Oh. And that's to be used for his benefit. Yeah. Okay. Issue will be left open. Court reserves jurisdiction. If a number is established with Social Security, 
dad is to submit the ex parte through his counsel order and we'll establish that as her child support arrear just because it'll be in lieu of and I won't determine determine it the other way are there any unpaid medical bills or any medical bills you had to pay out of pocket for Nico over the years yes okay so is there any outstanding amounts or have you established um, do you have bills to establish I, that or I, do you have a, an amount that you're I do have for? bills at the house it's a, a, a I did bring him to the emergency room twice you have a ballpark figure how much you've shelled out out of pocket because then mom would be normally responsible for half of that I, I believe it's it's I have a bill at home for three thousand and another one at for four thousand unfortunately I haven't been able to pay them half of them would uh, be hers half that obligation that's seven thousand yeah. are there any other bills uh, top of the top of my head no not that I can think of for Nico uh, it, and that's it, out of pocket you had to pay or are responsible for yes responsible for we can have a general order that any bills up through today the date of trial uh, subject to dad filing them in the court file will be declared half hers responsibility whether you collect it or not so in other words if you end up fronting the money okay. you have a right to come back here and in the courtroom and get a judgment amount so then um, you can collect from her okay. it's worth the trouble but being disabled she'll never return to work unless she gets off a disability or somebody declare, declares her not, no longer disabled but looks like she might not be working for quite some time how old is she 39 okay uh, there are 7,000 that dad knows about today of medical bills half of that is her responsibility approximate any additional bills will give him a time period to um, file that in the court court file and declare that half of that is her responsibility and that'll be another judgment sitting on her side of the ledger thank you Your Honor. okay <clears throat> let's see if I have any other questions we've disclosed all our assets and debts to the extent to the best of your knowledge uh, you pretty much have what you have and she has what she has yes So you're asking for sole legal custody to make all decisions for Nico it means enrolling him in school, picking out his doctors, taking him for his medical appointments, um, and uh, again, anything that, that affects your child. Yes. You make all decisions. Um, as far as contact, you are asking for sole physical custody, meaning contact would be at your discretion. Is that what he's asking for? Yes, because that's correct, Your Honor. The finding would be that mom has um, mental health issues, potentially, that were never um, established, I mean, or, or investigated at trial, because due to her failure to provide HIPAA releases, failure to cooperate with the submission of any evaluation, um, incidents involving police contact, false accusations against the father for uh, abuse on Nico, which the police and Detective Splinter did a full investigation, found out that um, they ruled out any poisoning allegations, that there was presence of lithium, which is an antipsychotic medication, and, and when mom did a toxicology test, um, mom uh, goes to Florida. Um, did she tell you when she goes to Florida? Did she tell you if she's going out of town? What? Or she left the child with you without telling you? She just she'll just leave she's up and up and goes she's and she's done that more than once more than once and that the mom calls dad uh terrible names disparaging remarks disparages her to third persons hockey parents um people that dad knows uh resulting in dad um no longer well, he's still 86 out of the fiesta I'm, I'm welcome to come back. I, I'm not coaching youth hockey though anymore. It's not a comfortable situation. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Um, and so, uh, disparagement, false accusations of poisoning allegations, threats to take Nico out of the state of Nevada, threats made to third parties such as school officials, um, more than once. Showing up at dad's house with two strangers who threatened dad at his own residence in the paternal That was actually his mother, Your Honor. 
The oh, grandma's residence. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, you don't live with your mom? No. Okay, so mom showing up with two male strangers threatening dad who was present at grandma's house. No. Grandma they, was there. They were threatening, grandma, threatening mom and dad. Grandma my mom and dad. And grandpa, Sorry. the paternal grandparents, resulting in the police having to be called. And um, also, is it the same people that showed up at the hockey rink and these two guys threatened you as well or scared off the people there? Scared off the people there. Were you present? I was not. So you heard, you heard about it? I heard about it, yes. Okay, and then um, mom being 86 from the hockey rink. Mom, uh, woefully keeping the child from school, missing school six out of the eight days she had uh, at any during her custodial period. He he missed school Monday, Tuesday, during Super Bowl weekend. Mom getting into a DUI Super Bowl weekend. Fortunately, the child was not with her when she got the DUI. Right. Uh, Mom continuously bad mouthing dad in the child's presence over the phone. Um, Mom has uh, substance abuse issues, possibly, that were not uh, uh, resolved or investigated at, um, prior to coming to this trial. There's evidence that she has taken or might still be taking Clonopin, Xanax, that lithium, Norco, which is a narcotic, Percocet, which is a painkiller narcotic, um, and others we may not know about due to her failure to provide discovery and cooperate with providing hyperolysis. Okay, um, let's see other findings. Oh, and the Instagram comments that you had filed in the court file, correct? Now, was it mom's motion for the contempt? It was. For, okay, based on her non-appearance today, that motion is denied, and no relief will be afforded, afforded her, and that's the final decision, no contemptual issue, and um, no findings. Um, does Dad have any other pending motions before the court? Just the motion for sole custody, which we removed. So you are going to be awarded sole legal, sole physical custody? Visitation is at your discretion. Uh, given your testimony today, in order for Mom to resume visitation, the court will hereby order that she uh, either get cleared of her mental health issues by submitting from a healthcare professional or undergoing the evaluation that was previously ordered um, that she is psychologically fit. She's not a danger to herself or to others or to the minor child. And that she is, if she is on any medication, that is, she is compliant with her medications and she's compliant with her treatment and evidence contained in her medical records that she is uh, mentally stable. We'll also need to get evidence of her residential stability and um, no, I guess, no future incidents in, in involving anything that might cause her to be a danger or a risk to the child. Meaning, we don't know in the future if she's still going to pursue going after Detective Splinter, uh, contacting the hockey parents. Um, she's kind of in a state of limbo right now and a very unstable state that is the finding. Uh, so in other words, sole physical custody, visitation, contact, solely at your discretion, including no contact, up to you. Um, I will ask you though how you feel about if she wants to speak with the child over the telephone, I would give you the right to monitor and supervise any telephone contact if she wants to talk to Nico, any inappropriate conversations that you monitor, you may simply hang up the phone. I don't know if she'll want to contact Nico via FaceTime or Skype. You have the right to monitor and then end it if or not have them have contact. It's, it's a tough situation. She's still the mother, um, but I will leave it to your judgment call as a parent uh, how um, she wants to contact him either through FaceTime or phone calls or video calls. She wants to send letters, birthday cards, <coughs> birthday gifts, Christmas cards, Christmas gifts, Easter cards. Uh, you have the right to open any letters, packages, and monitor um, or decide if Nico should um, have those cards or presents. Okay. Um, child support arrears. Okay, so we took care of that. There will be a um, 
will hold off on child support for current forward. He is entitled to 18% or the minimum 100 as a disabled, but she did file a financial disclosure form. The number of 18% would be $250 rounded up um, unless those checks will start coming through for Nico, and that would be, those checks would replace mom having to pay you, and I'll put that number in there, 250 going forward. Thank you, Mom. Okay. Um, Dad will provide any and all health insurance, whether it's available through employment or he obtains them through Obamacare, Medicaid, or whatever, um, or any time if he gets it through employment. He'll continue to uh, provide it and pay for, pay for that since it's at a minimal cost. If you get it through your employment and then there's like a monthly cost, you come back anytime and file a motion with the court, have her half responsible for that, again, whether you collect it or not. So I don't know if it's going to be worth your time uh, because of her financial situation. Okay. Bed bills. We talked about the 7,000 bed bills. And um, by the time he files the decree, he can file it. If there's any additional bills that he wants mom half responsible for, those sums would be reduced to judgment, but you'd have to include that dollar amount in the decree of divorce. Okay. Big property debts. And uh, neither party are asking for alimony. We have to... Oh, by the way, do we have your official address on record? You should. Is it still on Pickwick? Yes. Well, why don't you just put it on the record? 2422 Pickwick Drive, Henderson, Nevada, 89014. Do you know Mom's address? I'd like to establish it for the record, so we need to mail her She's a notice of entry of the decree of divorce. I have her at 1115 Jeffries Street, number 1140, Las Vegas, 8983. Is that right, Yes, I think that her is. Her apartment? Yes. Well, I guess she gets her mail there. All right. Um, we just have to ask, to the best of your knowledge, do you know if she's currently pregnant? We just have no. to ask. Okay, we just have to ask because Nico's the only child. Now, um, she is a camarada. It, I don't know. She's not here to tell me if she wants her old name back. Do you know what her old name is? Green Rock. G-R-E-E-N-R-O-C-K. Is that one word? Yes. Do we restore back Green Back? Green Let's Rock? Do that, Your Honor. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> her, maiden, her maiden name will be restored. I don't know. Is it really her option? It's her. I think it's her option. Yeah. Um, but it depends. What, what does his counterclaim say? Maybe he had something in his counterclaim to give her back her name. <sighs> uh, usually, it's you know, it's the mom's option. And then they have to change their driver's license, social security card, and he doesn't have anything yeah. in here to report. I don't know. Has that she, ever been she, done before? Your Honor, she might have uh, have a, a license already with Green Rock on it. Maybe that she got in Florida, possibly, because when she was arrested for the UI, it came up Mally Green Rock. Well, that might be evidence to give her back her name. Yeah, it is hereby name. order that she has restored her former or maiden name of Green Rock. She'll not be a camarada. Okay. That'll be in the decree. Yeah. Whether she continues to use your last name or not, that's that's going to be her problem. But as far as the divorce, to get her name, her former name is given back to her. Uh, coke class. Um, you know what? With dad having sole physical custody, I'm just going to indefinitely suspend. I know mom did hers, but with him ha being the only caretaker for Nico now, there's no sense in having him pay to do the class. But I just reserve in the future. I can make him do it, but it's just, you don't have to take it since you're going to be the full custodian. Um, which means, I don't know if you travel out of the country with sole legal custody, you do not need mom's written consent. To travel out of the country, um, you can maintain his passport. If he has one, does he have one? No. Okay. Um, but that's the, uh, that would be, only sole custodians would be allowed to do that. So, in other words, you don't need her permission to make decisions for Nico or travel with him. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. All right. And, sir, you'd like to get a divorce today? Yes. Uh, it won't be official until I get Mr. Anderson actually has me sign a final official divorce decree. Then it's official. Um, but based on the, uh, oh, we need the resident witness now. So, sir, you could step down. And I understand your mom is here. Yeah. All right, Grandma, you'll come up and.
You won't take as long. It'll only be about three minutes. Watch your step, ma'am. Remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk's going to swear you in. You can step up. <laughs> okay. You do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got Okay, Council, do you want to do the questions? Can you your name for the record, sir? Sandra Camarada. Where do you reside? S-A-N-D-R-A. Yes. Sandra Camarada. Okay. Yes. Address? 20, uh, 460 Elm Crest <coughs> Place, Henderson, Nevada, 89012. Okay. How long have you lived at that address? Uh, about four years. Four years. When did you first come to the state of Nevada to make it your home? 1998. And how often, on a weekly or daily basis, do you see the defendant in this action, Rockwell Camarada? Uh, probably five days a week. And uh, this is, in fact, your son, right? Yes. And you know of your own knowledge that he's a bona fide resident of Clark County, Nevada? Yes. Sounds good to me. Okay, I'm satisfied with residency. <laughs> All right, thank you, ma'am. Told you that would be quick. <laughs> Based on the testimony I've heard this morning and review the papers and pleadings on file in this matter and the exhibits admitted into tr trial today, an absolute decree divorce is granted. Each of the parties are hereby restored to the status of a single unmarried person. All right. Case closed. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Welcome. Thank you. All right, we can go up. Council will submit.